just woken up, it's my second day in a desert, very dehydrated, night sleep was interesting. It weren't the worst in the world, it did get very cold in the early morning hours, but other than that it wasn't the worst sleep I've ever had. Uh, what I did do earlier, so before the sun was going to come up, what I did was upturn rocks like these, similar to the, this method. So I'd upturn these. And basically the coolness underneath the rock, which has been there from the day before and all night, that will allow dew to form on here. Now, I've done it to quite a few rocks. I don't feel like it's worked too well, but on by leaving this, but on by leaving this uh, metal can out, but and by leaving this can out, what I've done is I managed to get a juice form in. It's on a plastic can, but it seems to have worked. What I've done is put that on my lips rather than use my tongue because I don't want to uh, dry my tongue out on the plastic can uh, but yeah that's kind of wet my lips a little bit it kind of makes you feel a bit better it's not a lot it's not enough but it's better than nothing it's a trick that old Bedouins would used to do when they had to survive out in the desert for any long period of time if it's on a long journey they would essentially just flip these rocks in the more in, before dawn they'd flip, they'd flip these rocks before dawn like this and then the dew would form on here. Oh yeah, so I just went to collect some dew droplets from stones. Uh, it worked best on my plastic can, which is able to cool to a lot of temperature and it did form on there. Maybe I had the can out at more of a longer, most advantageous time. Maybe the material is different, I don't know. You can also collect dew from plants in the desert, but uh, yeah, like not this part of the desert, I don't think, uh, just in terms of the fact that there was barely anything on the rocks. Well there's pretty nothing on the rocks, there's barely anything on my container. Uh, so trying to do that in a way that you can with like the desert grass like this. Realistically you've got no chance really getting anything worthwhile from that. When you're out in the desert, if you're in the desert in the middle of the day and you're at like 40 degree centigrade or Celsius heat, the average person if they're walking around will lose about 900 millilitres of water per hour. This will be done through sweat. Now that is a ridiculous amount. This is why you always stay out of the sun because you can feel it just sapping your energy. You can feel it burning your skin. You can feel the sand burning your feet on the ground. You do have to watch out for signs of dehydration. I haven't really urinated much. Uh, haven't urinated today yet. Uh, yesterday when I urinated, the colour wasn't really all that good. Uh, which isn't really a good sign. That means I'm sweating out most of my moisture, which is not very good for me, it means I'm not conserving my, or would, I'm not, that, that means I'm not conserving the water I've got inside me enough. Uh, yesterday in the sun when I was out here in the middle of the day, my god I felt so exhausted, you know, I felt nauseous, I felt sick, I felt like I was too weak to even hold this camera. Right now, I can hold this camera fine, pretty much. I'm dehydrated, but I can hold it. But yesterday when the heat was out, oh my god, it felt like I was carrying a brick house in my hands, it was that heavy, I just could not hold it. And I could not keep on walking. I was suffering from muscle cramps as well. Uh, my back of my knee was kind of cramping up, which wasn't too good. Uh, that's kind of pink part of an old injury that I had before I came out here. Though. Like when you're in a sauce situation, you find water, you just drink it the moment you get it. You know, don't ration it, don't think. It's like those drops of liquid on that container I've got, the plastic one. You drink it as soon as you can. You lick it, you wipe it up. Because, you know, it's going to, first off, it's going to evaporate. Second off, don't ration your water. You know, people have been found out in the desert, dead, died, dying. People don't rush any water. People have been found out in the desert, dead from dehydration with full canteens of water. Is this because they rationed it, and the dehydration and death kicked in before they could even finish their water? So it's kind of a bit of a balance. You've got to make your own judgment call. Do you drink it all now? Or do you all drink it all later? I drank all my water before I started the challenge because that is what the challenge is: no water. I have been collecting my urine though. Uh, but I haven't put in any today. I'm not sure what I'm doing with it. If I drink it, it could be quite putrid. It's going to taste absolutely gross. 
uh, I might try to use kind of a solar still type method and kind of evaporate the water into a kind of purified form. I can see the sun's really coming up now. Like, the weather's fine now, like the sun's just starting to come up, it's not hot, it's not cold, I can sit out here naked, I'm fine. But my god, once it heats up again, it's so cyclical, it gets cold at night, it gets really hot during the day. I'm going to have to spend all my time in the shelter. It's going to be absolutely, like, horrible, to be honest. No, like, we can't, I can't afford to stay here for much longer, to be honest. Uh, I'm going to see what I can do, I'm going to see what water I can gather, you know, try and make a solar still. But long term, long term, I do have to leave, I think. Most likely it's going to be t today. <coughs> oh, I don't feel too weird. <coughs> I had this weird cough as well. I hate this sort of sand and dust going into my lungs. And what you want to do is, uh, what you want to do is avoid eating. Eating means that the digestive system requires water to digest the food. Uh, so the less you eat, the better you will be. And the less water you use up. You can survive three weeks without water, about three days. Oh no, you can survive three weeks without food and about three days without water, so you should focus on keeping the water in. You've got stores of fat, stores of muscle on your body to burn in a last ditch effort, so you can always rely on that. If you are able to keep yourself covered up enough, you can actually reduce your sweat loss by about 25%, which is gonna, you know, increase your survival time by a far distance. So if you're only sweating a th thousand millimeters it keeping it covered up is going to help you survive out here you can like decrease your sweat loss by about 25 percent so uh if you are sweating a liter per hour then you're only going to sweat 750 and that 250 milliliters is key that's a, that's a, a decent sized drink 250 milliliters and that's every hour so keep covered up keep in the shade that's what i'm doing I'm on it out here just cause du during the uh, day because it's the sun hasn't come up yet properly. It's started to come up, but it's not up properly yet. Uh, you've got to stay out of the sun in between the hours of like 10 to 5. Uh, hikers get caught out in the middle of the day. They just pass out from heat exhaustion and they end up dying. Uh, like right now, it's the perfect temperature. I love this temperature right now. I could survive it here forever in this temperature. But uh, like it's going to get very hot in a few hours time. So... Oh, my lungs feel. Mm, my lungs are covered in dust and sand. <sighs> you know, some hikers have been out lost in the desert, like the Grand Canyon, and they've died within two hours in the middle of the day. But some have survived up to like three days by hiking. You know, when it's cool and being clever about what they do. Uh, from what I've read, the average Bedouin, which are native to like the desert and the Sahara type area can survive on just about a litre a day and be fine, whilst the average person takes 19. They do this by being clever, staying in the shade during the middle of the day. They wear dark flowing clothing. People think white clothing is the best thing. Dark clothing is actually better. Because dark clothing will not reflect your heat back into your body. It will absorb the heat. While white clothing will reflect the heat from your body back into your body. <coughs> But, you know, they are accustomed to desert life for thousands of years, so uh, they are probably more better suited. Like, water's my only priority. I don't care about food. I've seen one lizard, but it was a bit too fast for me to catch. Uh, and it was in the middle of the day yesterday, and I was, I, I couldn't move. I was too too hot, too exhausted. Didn't have any energy. Carrying all my bags, it was tough. Odds are, I don't think I'm going to find any real water source out in this desert at all. Uh, all the rivers kind of here like seem to have dried up you know there are like a few plants here and there but they're very dry plants they're very brittle there's really not really any real amount of water out here to be honest now as I said you know I don't eat food food will only cause the digestive system to pull moisture out of the rest of your body when in fact you really need the moisture to be in your brain because you need to be thinking and you need it in your muscles to be moving you know you don't need it in your digestive system it's just going to be drained but normally you really need about a gallon of water a day at least maybe four gallons of water a day uh, in a desert to stay properly hydrated uh, so I... well I blacked out there almost you know if, you, if I get heat stoke bad out here that could be the end of it 
<coughs> like the middle of the day today is going to be a very tough challenge because we'll be my second middle of the day out here. The first one was hard enough, the second one's going to be even harder because I don't have that kind of water store within my body to be able to keep on going. You know, one of the key things about surviving out of the desert is learning the basic between water and kind of movement. Just limit your movement. Limit your movement during the day. Limit it in any way you can. If you, someone, performing hard, someone who performs hard work at like 43 degrees Celsius is going to be using 19 litres of water a day. But someone who's kind of out there for the... But someone who's out there for the same amount of time will not use belly anywhere near the same. Oh, my arms start to cramp up. It's like the more you sweat, the more you breathe, the more you talk, the more moisture you lose. So be careful. Exactly. When water's scarce, just don't eat. But do not eat. 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 Really, should be drinking about a litre of water every hour at you know temperatures of like 38 degrees. Well, again, anywhere near that. I'm kind of tired and just like. It's hot, it's hard out here, it's hard out here, and it's gonna get hot. And that's gonna be difficult. Now, you, the number one thing you need in size of is oxygen. But unless you're drowning in water, that's not enough gonna be an issue, so water's kinda like the main thing. Uh, yeah, oh my god. So yeah, just like dehydration can be the biggest killers out here. Uh, it, it's always gonna be the biggest challenge. You know, it's, you start off in mild dehydration, lack of saliva. Uh, kind of your energy is a bit lower, uh, so you got lack of you got lack of saliva. So for dehydration, you start off start off with it being mild. With dehydration, you start off with it being mild. You got like lack of saliva. With dehydration, you start off with dehydration. You start off with it being mild. So you got lack of saliva. You got kind of a decreased frequency of urine. The colour of the urine will be darker and the amount of urine will be less. You get, when you get moderate dehydration, you get even less urine, you get dry mouth, your eyes get a bit sunken, your heart beats a bit rapid, you get more severe dehydration. Oh my god, that's when there's no urine, there's lethargy, there's irritability, you get vomiting, you get diarrhea, and then you've got really that kind of low energy, that passing out, they can't move, you can't drink, you 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 die. Uh, so you've got to be careful of all that. Uh, hyperthermia is a big risk out here, your body is just too hot and when you know you don't have that moisture inside you to, to sweat, the sweat will regulate your body temperature, it's as bad as it is to lose that that moisture from your body, from sweating, then you kind of do need it because if you didn't sweat that moisture out and that will cool your body, then essentially you would die from your body heating up too high of a temperature. Because uh, you know the temperature outside is higher than your internal temperature, which raises your body temperature too high, and without the water to cool you down, you're gonna have big issues. If you stop sweating, that's when you should be concerned. Because if you stop sweating, then your body can't do anything, really much anything else to kind of reduce your body temperature, because that's the best thing it can do. Like the heat stress can cause a thing called thermal regulation, uh, this allows for the body heat to uh, overheat itself uh, and the body will kind of lose its ability to uh, control this. It's always a good idea when you're out in the desert to take as many breaks as you can, uh, kind of allow your body temperature just to drop slightly, ever so slightly and that kind of, you feel like you've got more energy almost, but it will just slightly drop and you're gonna, you're gonna have the energy to keep on hiking out throughout the day. Now one of the uh, good things about being in a desert that starvation is and one of the good things that, about being in a desert is that not eating is not going to kill you dehydration will always get you first so like food shouldn't be your main priority out here now uh the odds of you dying of starvation is very low the odds of you dying of dehydration is very high if you are going to die i see i don't plan to die i'm not going to die like you know i'm not an idiot so like you know you're more likely to die from a different thing you know, so dehydration, dehydration. So before you die of star, so so before you die of starvation, which sets in and kind of will kill you about in about three weeks, you're more likely to die of injury. You're more likely to die of dehydration. You're more likely just to you know be rescued in that time. So since it is a slow process, starvation, you want to conserve your energy. You want to move very slowly. You want the sun coming out behind those clouds. That's not a good. That's not a good sign. It's going to get really, really hot. Uh, 
yeah, just save your energy for different survival parties. But I will do, you know, some very low energy kind of uh, looking for some food. Uh, you only want to eat the minimum amount of food. Uh, just a bare minimum and just not feel hungry. If that makes you feel like you've got a bit more energy inside you, then so be it, but don't eat too much. There's something sharp in there. It's these. So you look, look how easily they stick into... See, it's left to, Ah! Oh, still in there. Oh, sorry. So these have been a bane in my life for these past two days. You can't see them on the ground very easy because they are very sand coloured. And they just, in every angle at 360 degrees, there's a sharp point in there which keeps digging into my feet. Yeah, anyway, well, well, what you really want to do is kind of eat enough. I've eaten nothing or just eat a little bit which will keep the hunger pangs away. Uh, so like plants are normally the easiest thing around the world to find, essentially. Uh, plants are take are low energy, you know. Plants are normally the easiest thing for you to find out in most places in the wild. Uh, this is because plants, you don't, you don't need to hunt them. It's underground, they're decent carbs, easy. You don't spend a lot of energy kind of trying to find them. I think in a desert, I think it's better to look up. Oh, stepped in another one. Look at that, 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 look at that. So in a desert, it's best to be uh, on the lookout for more things like insects, lizards and snakes. Because like, if you're just trying to find out with plants, then you need kind of an expansive knowledge of all the what plants to eat. And as you can see out here, I've only ever seen one plant, and it's that plant right there. Those are dry and they are those are inedible. Ah, oh, we're stepping. Another one. Another one. You know, so yeah, I think oh, the sun starts to come out. So whilst there are all kinds of edible creatures in the desert, they're hard to find, you know, because there's less for them to eat on, you know. Desert is a very barren land, so that, that means there's very few creatures per square kilometre versus, say, a jungle. Whereas jungle is just teeming with insects all over the place, you know. There's not really any mosquitoes out here. Mosquitoes are a sign of there's a lot of life a lot of the time, and there's absolutely not much life out here. Uh, so, yeah, in a desert, you can find things like, you know, ants, scorpions, grasshopper centipedes, Tarantulas, snakes, lizards, that I've always said, ah, okay, my feet are just... Like, these rocks absolutely came to walk on. It's just constantly uncomfortable on your feet. But yeah, uh, you should always eat your reptiles and snakes when you, because they can have uh, bacteria in them as they are. Uh, my energy levels are starting to go. You know, a way to, you know, Look for like lizards or snakes, mostly like lizards in the desert. Uh, snakes are less common. It's a turn over rocks, so like this. They can often be underneath rocks. Ah, they often like to bask in the early morning sunlight just to get their body warm for the rest of the day as they can't regulate their own body temperature as they are reptiles. Same thing that snakes do. Ah! Another one of those sharp things in my feet. But yeah, what we want to do is be very careful where you put your hands, you know, when you put them down, kind of move them quick and don't wait around. You know, you're more likely to find plants. Like you're more likely to find plants. Well, you want to find insects and creatures to eat lizards in places where there's a lot of plants uh, or vegetation. There's not a lot around here, so I've got really nowhere to look in particular. You know, they're more likely to be say near to maybe that plant, but this is just a bad place. It doesn't make that much of a difference. You know, lizards can be found quite out in the open at the time. You can kill them with like a stick or throwing rocks at them or just catching them very easy. You know, in the early morning hours, they like to hide under flat rocks. So you just pin it 
Clip of a rock, very easy. A snake, it's a sim similar way, with like the bask out in the sun in the early morning just to warm up their body. But you gotta be very careful they don't bite you, you know. Be careful exactly where you put your hands. Don't put them in any uh, crevices, you know. I've seen crevices around here. Avoid putting your hand in there because you never know what's in there. Uh, you do see on these Survivor TV shows, you know, they see a crevice, they find a snake or they find a lizard, oh, it's done straight away. That's because they put in hours and hours of editing uh, and loads and loads of times that they would actually not find anything. Uh, and that's just, you know, they don't really often find stuff in front of holes because a hole might be there, but most holes aren't really inhabited. Their holes have been used in the past and are no longer being used now. You know, there's so many dangerous things out in the desert, you know. Insects are out there to, that can kill you, that can carry diseases. Flies carry diseases from feces to feces. So you really want to be careful exactly what you're doing and exactly what you're handing. You know, you've got to check. You know, you don't want to be stepping over a rock like this and see a snake on the other side. So always go around the rock and be careful because that's where they like to hide in, kind of that camouflage and kind of hide oh, in the shade. Never sh Never shot. Ah, 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 that time. So see that the fact I'm walking around barefoot means my feet are at risk of being bitten by snakes. They can be at risk of being just, you know, standing on rocks, standing on anything that could be sharp. Like you really want to find roots of vegetation. I think later today, I think I'm probably gonna have to leave this area. So I don't think I can stay here for much longer, you know, there's not really any source of food or anything. Yeah, if you do find food, don't cook it, it just dehydrates the food and it's gonna mean it's gonna require moisture on your body to digest it rather than moisture within that creature, lizard, bug, anything. You know, the more barren the desert, the less things you're gonna find out there to eat. So I'm finding that to be very true. Always be careful, like if there's any place that creates shade, like your shelter, they can danger for you. I think I'm, I'm done for now. Uh, just rejoining me right now. So I was just uh, trying to see if I could find anything behind this kind of layers of rock. It's kind of like this. Kind of like breaking it down. Guess what I've just found? Some kind of nest. It's some kind of nest that's webbing for some kind of spider. It'd be a large one. I can see its legs. Its legs are white. You can maybe just about to see it, I don't know. It's right there in the middle of the screen. It's got a big body. What I need to do is make a decisive blow, kill it straight away. Uh, if I don't kill it straight away, I'd say it's gonna get away because I don't have the energy to be able to run fast enough to catch it. It might go into another crevice. So I'm gonna get a large, Rounded rock. I can see it in there. I can see it in there. I'm just gonna. I don't know. No idea. I've no idea. You can see, look at that juice. It's definitely made an impact. I think it's still in there. I'm gonna look for a, st a stick. Uh, fortunately, there's unfortunately there's no really good sized sticks around here. I don't wanna leave the area because I don't wanna lose it. There we go here. This will be okay. It's a, it's a weak stick, but it's the only thing I've got. There you go. You see that? Got it. Ah, oh, how juicy it looks. Still slightly alive. Uh. I 
be a nice flat rock to put it on. There you go. There's a bit of food for me. It's a pretty big one. Now it's time to eat the uh, to us, I can't identify what kind of spider or translate it may be. No idea. Please let me know if you do know. Well, that's gonna be way too close. So I don't know what this uh, spider or tantalum may be. Could be poisonous, I'm not sure. Uh, let me know if you do know what type it is. I'm gonna eat the legs and the abdomen. I'm gonna leave the head. And just cut it open there. It was sharp, look how sharp that is. Put this down for two seconds. Don't really want to waste any part of this creature. Ah, yeah. Sun's starting to beat down on my back. So yeah, it's going to start off with the uh, legs. It tastes crunchy. Not too bad. You can see ants are trying to get at the spider now. As they sense the food. They'd never be able to get a spider if it weren't dead. Uh, not too bad. Now the abdomen's the hard part. Like, I'm gonna cut the head off. seconds to do it in. Ah, look how juicy this abdomen looks. Ah. Well, one of a tea, it's on the stone, I'll obviously not eat the stone. Uh. Uh. Let's turn this camera there, you can see it better. Ah, uh. here you guys, nothing. The juices will help hydrate me as well. It's going to be absolutely putrid and pussy. Uh, and pus like, I should say. Give it a smell. Oh. I'm not looking forward to it. Ah, ah, ah.
あうん大丈夫バスねあかんしわべうんあああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああ Oh, there we go. There is. Ah, that will keep that sustenance going. You just eat little and often, and that was quite a juicy spider's abdomen. So that will help keep me going. It help stave off those hunger pangs. And uh, yeah, I feel like that's a positive for me. A nice juicy, juicy. I don't know, desert spider, desert. You know, yeah, desert spider most likely. What I'm gonna do now? I'm gonna. Eat. Utilize the sun's energy, the heat, to get a solar still. Now I don't have any waterproof kind of a uh, plastic like bin bags to kind of make one out of that. So what I'm going to be doing is using or making a solar still by using the greenhouse effect using bottles. So here's a bottle I saw earlier. Ah, it's just so many short things in the ground. There you go. That's a. Now it hasn't really got. It's quite old. It has got a small, it hasn't really got any small holes in it, so it should be fine. What we're going to do, yeah, is create a solar still using this. I mean, obviously you ask, oh, where do you get the liquid from to make a solar still? Well, I've been urinating inside my black canister since I came out here yesterday. Ah! First off, I do. It's got my urine in. Oh! Wow. It's absolutely putrid. Now, I'm not able to put that in, balance that together like so. Ah. Now all I need to do is now seal this up with as a tight a seal as possible, probably can't use the lid. I'm going to seal this up using some of the parachute material and then any droplets will go into here. My problem is that it's quite an overcast day out in the desert today, uh, which means that it may not evaporate this enough. Now the advantage is here that this is black. It's going to absorb heat, absorb the light and this will heat up and make this evaporate and the evaporation will go through this tube go through this tube and I'm going to use some power chute and cover this part up and that will give it some shade and that will give some like, good airflow around here so it will keep it nice and cool so that will turn into liquid at the bottom but I do need to uh, cut some power chute up I need to get a sharp rock and uh, yeah I'll be able to do that and also just cool it down by using dirt will help keep the sun off it. What I want to do is smash a rock down on another rock until I get a sharp enough piece. <sighs> what I want to do is smash this rock over on that hard one in the ground. Just more brittle. This one's to smash into a sharp piece, hopefully. I need to do it harder. Missed it.
Look how sharp this is. I'll be able to use that and cut this parachute up. Once you get a tear inside it, it cuts a bit easier. I'm going to put it parachute pieces underneath a piece of rock to stop it from blowing away. I think I need a bigger piece. Nylon is partially waterproof, not fully waterproof, so it will help keep trap the moisture in there, especially when I've got a few, few layers. So I'm going to use this, and this will cover that in shade, put a few rocks down to keep it in place. There we go, and then just pull that in, it's like a nice seal. Okay, so that's sealed in. Now, the only way for any, say, now that's sealed in, look at that. The only way for water to escape is through that tube, so it will evaporate and then it will condense in the new bottle, which would be a lot cooler because it's kept in the shade, as you can see down there. Now, my next move, so I've got to start thinking about, I've got to start thinking about getting out of here. Uh, so there's two ways of us uh, kind of, I've got to start thinking about getting out of here. There's two ways to think about rescue. You got, act, there's two ways to think about rescue or getting out of a place. You can either passively do it with signaling or you can actively do it by making a move. Now. You know, my water supplies within my body are draining. So really, I should make a move tonight. What I'm going to do in the meantime is create some passive rescue techniques, uh, make an SOS sign, and uh, make a little fire as well. It's really, really dehydrated. It's really tough out here. Like, my energy sap. Like, every like every day is just getting harder and harder. Like, every day is just getting harder and harder. Uh, the one thing which has saved my life, I reckon it saved my life. Is that? Do you see that? I'll show you it again. That. Do you see it? One last time. That. The clouds. Uh, those clouds have actually saved me. The overcast day has stopped the sh as a stop. Uh, those clouds have absolutely saved me. The overcast day has stopped the sun burning and burning me, and uh, increased my body temperature. You know, it's, it's not as hot as it should be, as always it could be. So that's been my saving grace. Uh, if that wasn't the case, I'd, I think I'd be on the floor. I'd be on the floor completely. Like I'm on the floor right now, but I'd be on, on the floor, like full on. Uh, let's. Uh,
Now you do have to be careful. There's no snakes or lizards hiding underneath. So you've got to keep an eye out each time you tear it. Make sure there's no scorpions or anything else hiding. As you can see, it's really hot outside now. The sun is shining bright. Uh, but now I'm pretty much tired. I need to keep my energy and keep my moisture, so I've got to stay underneath here. This will keep me many degrees cooler than being out in the direct sunlight. What I will do though. Ah, uh, oh, oh my knees, oh my god it hurts. Let's move these rocks, take out all the big ones. Literally just, it says like a shift in method. The big ones stay in your hand whilst the small ones fall through the gaps of your fingers. There we go, see. Let's put a bit of parachute down as well. Make it a bit more comfortable. I think I'm gonna have to climb that at some point. There's my solar still. Oh, I'll turn some rocks fall down on me there. Still working away. There's my parachute shelter. It works better in the night, during the day. Uh, it's not as effective as this kind of little cavern. No, I do have to be careful being in this little cavern. as a check that there's no Kind of in like no because like, this is where I found that kind of juicy desert spider. You have to look if there's not any kind of lizards or snakes hiding in here. Because if I like this spot, then for sure as hell lizards and snakes will like this spot as well. I'm not the only one who's gonna like it here. I would say this location is pretty much time to take my lips are so dry. Oh. I'm literally, I'm literally down out here, it is so bad. Uh, it wasn't too bad this morning when I had cloud cover, but without cloud cover, this place is absolutely tough. I plan to leave tonight, uh, leave this kind of spot, hopefully be out and get back to people uh, by tomorrow. I know somewhere around that way, there's an old river, it's probably dried up, but rivers generally locate near to people. You do have to be careful putting your hands in here because, you know, a snake, you could like very much, you know, snakes like to stay from, snakes like to stay away from humans because we are predators at the end of the day. Uh, but you have to be careful when you put your hands around here because, you know, if you alarm a snake, then it's going to react very quickly uh, in self-defense. Like you've not got to be careful about the places where you choose to scope out. Uh, like I've, I've chosen this place, I think it's a good place. Uh, I've been next to it last night, I felt safe enough to sleep. So it's good enough for now. Uh, you know, the last thing I can afford is to be bitten by a poisonous snake. Uh, it's hard enough having these kind of heat issues. Uh, but you know, being bitten by a snake would make it 10 times worse, you know. So you've got to be careful where you lay down, you know. You want to be in shade, but you want to be in safety at the same time. So you've got to kind of use your mind and make a choice. I, I wouldn't I don't sit on the ground directly uh, for two reasons. Firstly, the sunlight's been on the ground, it's heat of the ground. Second reason is that it's very uncomfortable. When you're naked, you've got loads of little rocks kind of digging into you. It's not too nice. You know, a lot of time, you know, scorpions or anything like snakes or lizards hide underneath the ground. My lips are so dry, even when I lick them, they don't get any drier. I mean, my lips, 
my lips are so dry, even when I lick them, like, they don't really get any more wetter or more wet, as they say. So my lips are so dry, uh, even when I lick them, they don't even get more wet, to be honest. They just get a bit gloopy almost. You know, the golden rule of the desert is to look where you, look where you touch, you know, look before you touch, actually. Uh, you don't, you know, find yourself stung by a scorpion it's just camouflage or hidden underneath the sand or underneath a rock or a snake or anything like that. I feel like as I talk, by the end of the, by the end of the sentence, my mouth just feels so dry, everything just sticks together. Ah, uh, my hard to talk, you know. It literally feels like my brain is swelling up at the moment. Uh feels like imagine trying to squeeze a size ten foot into a size four shoe. Like, oh, it, it doesn't work. It does not work. <laughs> luckily, because I'm in a part of the desert, well, luckily and unluckily, like, it's been hard to find any food, or I haven't found any water, but because I'm in quite a dry, in quite a uh, part of the desert where there's just no vegetation, uh, it's meant that I haven't had to come across a snake, which was, I could try and kill it, but, you know, as much as I could try to kill a snake, a snake could try to kill me. Uh, in the middle of the night, or can I might just be around the corner and just you know quickly, in self defence, bite me in the leg or somewhere like that. Okay, so one thing I want to do during the day, I think it's about like midday. It's got to be about one or two o'clock. Uh, it's you know staying in shelter. This is as cold as you're going to get in any part of the desert right now. Uh, this has been in the shade all day long, so it's not really hot to the touch. It might not be comfortable, but at least I'm in the shade. The sun is right overhead, and I've still got shade. I should be thankful for that, I should be thankful for the clouds which covered me this morning. Since I do plan to be staying in this one spot for quite a while now, because it does have shade, and I'm, in, you know, in the, uh, in, in, you know, in sh see, I can't even talk, like, it's, it's really hard out here, I don't think, it's hard to kind of comprehend how difficult it is out here. Yeah, so since I'm in the shade, I think I'm going to, because uh, since I'm going to be stay put in here, in the shade, I think I'm going to make an SOS sign, uh, if anyone sees it, anybody will be able to see it. Uh, I'm kind of doing this more, for an example, uh, but yeah, you never know. Now, the biggest danger in the desert is exposure, uh, the heat during the day and the cold during the night. Uh, so, you know, I'm staying in the shade, staying cool. It's gonna take a lot less moisture. I don't feel like I'm burning up. I'm avoiding getting sunburn, which is good, because the sunburn will make your skin dehydrate and it will make you even hotter than you were before. So this is a good sign. The best defense against the sun is simply, it's not about covering yourself in ash or mud or anything like that, or clothes. It's really about good shelter. Stay in shelter, stay out of the sun, and that's your best defense against the sun. It's the only real, if truly effective defense against the sun. Of all the other defenses, just minimize it. This kind of actually gives you a solid defense. You know, whilst I'm still getting more dehydrated, my lips get more dry. And I do wet them wet my lips uh, by using the urine because the salt content of urine it probably makes it a bit worse but it kind of makes it better for the short term and I do have plenty of urine left in that bottle to use up. Now the sun is so dehydrating you know the wind is a killer as well uh, and I'm using this time in this kind of shade to kind of assess my situation uh, I've got a bit of a plan going now uh, when you're in the shade you know you can make a better kind of formation of ideas because it kind of reduces your stress you're not in the heat, you're not getting heat stress. You're able to kind of conduct your thoughts without thinking desperately about water so much. So, you know, my plan, I think, is to stay here until the sun goes down. I'm gonna make my way up that little mountain. Like it's a tiny mountain, it's more like a like that rock hill, pretty much. That rock hill, yeah. Uh, so I'm gonna make myself up that mountain, well, it's more of a rock hill or like sand dune type thing. Uh, it's like a rock formation, like a rock formation, yeah. So it's more like a rock formation rather than that. I'm making myself at the little mountain. I call it the little mountain. It's probably not that high. Uh, it's easily hikeable. It'd be hard to do in the sun and the heat, so I'm going to stay here until that time comes. Whilst I am here, I will prepare myself for the hike I'm going to have to make. I'm going to make myself some clothes, something for my feet, something for my hair to get the sun off it. Uh, sorry, it's something to keep me warm at night, uh, yeah. You should always avoid trying to lick your lips, you know, I, and I do feel guilty of it. I lick my lips because, you know, your lips are kind of the most outwardly visible sign of dehydration. And it's, it's a, 
like your body, your skin gets dry, but you don't really notice it. Uh, your body inside is getting dry, but you wait, you you know, you, your skin gets dry, but it's not that bad. Uh, being, you know, your body's getting dry inside. You know, you're about seventy percent water. You probably go down a few percent. You go down any more than a few percent, you probably end up dying. Uh, but yeah, but the lips are like an outward kind of organ in a sense, and they're quite fleshy and quite moist normally. So when they're dry, it's really quite nice. Well, you know, shelter is the most important thing, you know. Shelter from the exposure of the sun. You know, this shelter's really been quite handy, I think, uh, having all this rock. It's very cooling, it's very cooling. Uh, oh, but I've got to be careful if it does kind of pour down. I don't know, it probably won't. It's the desert. You can get a flash flood in this area quite easily because the desert floor is quite hard. It's quite tough and almost impermeable at some point, so it's not going to soak up the rain. It's almost like concrete, to be honest. Good, I do feel like I am suffering from heat exhaustion, to be honest. Uh, it's not so bad now I'm in the shade, but whenever I'm out in the sun, it just absolutely kills me. I don't know, you have to be kind of aware and take aware of these things, you know, I don't really have much of a medikit. I don't really have a medikit at all, to be honest. Uh, so we have to kind of uh, see what we can do. You know, what you want to do to avoid this is kind of work during the evenings and not during the day. During the day is the worst time to work, move, be moving because you're going to be feeling the heat so much worse than at any other point. So the first thing you kind of get is like heat cramps. Uh, this is because due to the lack of a uh, salt due. So first thing you do is get heat cramps. It's just first thing you do is get heat cramps. It's just due to the lack of salt uh, available in your body as you kind of start to lower those levels. Uh, you lose the salt through excessive sweating. Uh, so your body starts to cramp up. Is that sense? You get muscle cramps in your legs, your arms, anywhere. You can kind of imagine, to be honest, most of your legs and arms about your, and your abdomen as well. Uh, in this case, you know, you should always just, you know, get out of the shade and just relax at that point. I feel like I've had more heat exhaustion than the cramps. The cramps haven't really kicked in. But I just find it, if, at the moment I find it hard to walk, I kind of stop walking and get shade. So that's maybe how I'm avoiding heat cramps, to be honest. So I feel like when I, I'll, I've, been, like, drinking some of the, I've been drinking some of the urine, uh, so that kind of helps with the heat cramps, I think, because you kind of do need some essential salts in your body. So whilst, you know, salt can dehydrate, you do kind of need it, and I've lost a lot of salt through sweating. Uh, you know, heat exhaustion is that I think I've lost a large amount. You know, I feel dizzy in the sun. I've been sweating a lot. I've been feeling a bit nauseous when I get in the sun. When I'm in the shade, I feel 10 times better, though. There's not a lot I can do, you know. You just have to wait it out and tend to make my way out. Starting tonight, I should be out by tomorrow, which is the plan. Uh, from knowledge of the local area, I think that's the best way to go. Uh, and I'll be doing that later today once the sun goes down. But when, if I was to get into a heat stroke situation, that's when it all goes wrong. Uh, because heat stroke is hard to kind of get out of it unless you've got a good source of water. At heat stroke level, even in being in the shade, it won't help you. It doesn't matter how fit you are, how healthy you are, you know, you more like to get it if you're old. But you know, you can be 25 and still get hit by them quite hard. You know, a heat sock is literally a complete failure of all your body's methods of trying to keep cool. Like, like you know you're a heat sock and you start making bad decisions. I don't think I've started making bad decisions yet. I'm not too irritable. So I think I've, I'm not, I haven't got a heat sock. I've had heat sock before. And I was cycling through the Sahara Desert uh, and I started to kind of kept cycling, kept pushing myself and making bad decisions but this time I'm in the shade, I've got my head screwed on right uh, you know, I know what I need to do to get out of here uh, so it's all about a waiting, it's all about I know what I need to do to get out of here so it's all about a waiting game to be honest you know, if you get heat stroke, this is the point where your body temperature is rising and your body temperature and heat stroke is when your body temperature is rising and your body can't do anything to slow it or cool it down that's when you're not sweating luckily, I still feel a bit of sweat on me which is kind of good, kind of bad, because uh, I'm losing moisture, but at least it means that I'm keeping cool. Uh, it's when you stop sweating, is when kind of you're in trouble, you know. You get worse, if you get beyond that, your legs start twitching, you know, you pretty much pass out, uh, you can't talk, you can't breathe. The hottest part of the day is now gone. Uh, luckily, we've got some more cloud cover, but I'll be honest with you, the survival out here has been aided so much by the cloud cover. If the sun was out right now, I'd be burning up. It's really warm, don't get me wrong, because the sun goes up, like in and out of the clouds, but I'd be burning, but I would be burning up, essentially. Got myself some materials, all put down. Uh, I mean, turn up this, we'll make a pot. 
poncho out of that and this I'm gonna make a rescue sign now I'll show you what it is once I've made it I've already unfortunately cut my hand I turned through this all but yeah uh, let's make the rest of this so I need to uh, be hiking out tonight ah oh, god so I just hit the on a rock it always bloody hurts Okay, so yeah, what I'm doing now is I'm going to put this parachute into the shape of a V. A V is an international sign, an internationally understood sign for rescue. Uh.
พนามNothing but these dunes in the way. But as you can see, that V side is very noticeable. If anybody comes, that V side is very noticeable. If anybody comes in this area from any of these peaks, they will see that V distinctive from the brown beige sand and dust. And they will know that that's a place that somebody. He's looking for rescue. One thing I will very quickly do is that I'm going to put some stones and rocks on this V shape. And the way I see it, the more defined I can keep the V, the more distinctive it will be, and more deliberately. The way I see it, the more defined the V will be, the more deliberate it will look, because the wind may blow it away all over the place. Because it is a parachute, it is quite lightweight. Together it's quite heavy, but it's quite lightweight. So, it's going to. Go. Now that's going to stay in place much better than if I not put any rocks on it to weigh it down. Time to make me some clothes. Ready for this hike and wear out. There's so, there's so many sharp things on the floor. It's unreal. It's unreal. So <laughs> one of the clothes I'm making will be some shoes. Well, not shoes exactly, but you know, some socks really. Just something to protect my feet, both from the heat of the ground, as well as protect my feet from the sharp objects. Just any kind of thin layer will help. Uh, there you go. Yeah, I found this rag earlier. I always thought what to use it for. I'm not really going to use it for anything, but I did pick it up, you know. So here, I've got myself some material, nylon, and some laces, essentially, which are the strings from the parachute. I've got some pen marks on my leg here, so I put your pen there instead. Ah, oh, oh, my feet, my feet, 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 feet. Okay. So here we go. First off, it should be a perfect shape. It's like a bandana. There we go. Just roll it over a few times. And that's going to be able to do a nice loose fit. That's going to keep the sun off my head. Now with this, Bit of that, I can reduce the glare, but what I'm gonna have to do is make some eye holes. So I'm gonna have to look at my eyes are in a bit. Also, well, I'll give it a hose, I was a bit want to find a sharper rock, but yeah, you can also put this over your mouth for you from the sandstorm, and it also keeps your moisture inside your mouth while you're not going to be breathing out and letting all, all evaporate. So, there we go. Two pieces there done. Now to make the shoes, which is the hard part. So this is kind of more improvised. Okay, so oh, I've got to do. there we go. A little shoe. Oh, it's actually a lot easier than I thought it was gonna be. These will protect my feet from look at those feet. They've been worn down. Look how you got my skin colour there and my it's all just white from rocks and just minerals. With these, I can put another layer on. I've got plenty of material. The more layers, the better. There we go. Let's double tie that. And I can use these as essential laces to help keep it all together. 
almost like the Roman sandals of Times Road. Don't want to put them too tight, we want them to be tight enough to stick together, not so tight that they let themselves go. Back to the front, from there, where to put you in that knot. So the more different place where you put knots, the more you're secure it's going to be. So that when the train does actually wear down the base and kind of cuts the strings, at least they have different knots so it won't make as much of a difference. There we go, let's finish them off with a nice little bow. There we go, isn't that a little, little cute, cute little shoe. Let's finish it off top of the ankle. Let me get the fence away. There it is, little bow. Let's tie the loose string just so you don't fall down. You want to tie up all the loose string just so you don't fall down. But these all need to be worn once, you're not meant to be taking them on and off again anyway. Oh my god, that feels good. Wow. Wow. It's making a world of difference. Like, I don't feel just like tiny pieces of rock jabbing into me and I don't feel, and I don't feel thorns digging into my feet. Absolutely lovely. It's going to make my hike two times easier. Especially when it's dark, I want me to see where to go. I'll have my infrared vision, but I want where to go ultimately. Nice. Look at that. That's like I need a, sh a sharp rock. Uh, should do. Look at that. This isn't actually from uh, that attempt. I think I did this earlier. As you can see, it kind of it matches the same tie. This earlier when I was making my one earlier. So this one is very sharp, and I'm a big fan. Look at this match. Oh uh, yeah, see. Pretty handy, didn't really need to smash that right there. Okay. Whilst my whilst my feet aren't in pain, I just sat down on my bare butt and it's quite uncomfortable still. Okay, so here we go, poncho. It's around about the middle. Got a big old head. Need to make it a bit bigger. There we go. <laughs> now I've got a working poncho as well. It's a bit long, so I'm gonna have to like make it a bit shorter. But, done. Obviously I'm gonna have to take it off now because it's not gonna be useful until later on in the night. But yeah, yeah, it's gonna make some few adjustments, but that's gonna keep me warm in the night because it's nylon, it's not really breathable. So in the night it's gonna be lightweight, yeah, it's gonna keep me warm. Winds are picking up. That could be a sign of a flash flood coming. Now when the winds are picking up, the skies are as grey as this in the Sahara Desert. That well could mean a storm's coming. Uh, as much as I would relish a storm, I am naked and I will get cold very easily. Hope it doesn't come.
buildings there, and that means people. People there, that means safety. I'm in a bit of a predicament at the moment. My solar still hasn't been too successful. There's only a few droplets in there. Uh, I guess because it's been quite an overcast day. It's now the evening. And I plan to... It's now the evening and I plan to uh, essentially hike out tonight. You know, it's getting nice and cool. It's almost ready to hike, but I want to wait till it's actual dark. Uh, and that hiking will you know, make, be made a lot easier by the low heat. Because it hasn't keep me warm during the night if I keep on moving. So it's kind of win-win. Uh, yeah. As you can see, there's literally only a few droplets in there. It's literally just a waste of time. Uh, yeah, so, you know, you can't have every technique you do be effective. Uh, I've avoided drinking my urine so far, but it might be time to. I've only used this to wet my lips so far, but now I'm gonna have to drink it, you know. It's not a great survival tactic, but a short-term situation you need it. And I'm losing energy. <laughs> oh. Ah. That's absolutely gross. But ah. there's a I think I knew that was going to be bad. It's worse than I thought. It was worse than I thought it was going to be. It's like it to account. It has, it has drizzled. It has drizzled a bit these past two days. But it's just, it's not enough. It just falls to the floor, evaporates straight away. It just doesn't form into any kind of thing you can lick. Even on the power shoot, it goes into it, goes into it. And you can't even lick it off. You end up just wasting more moisture licking it off. I've been thinking about this idea for the past few hours, thinking this is my last kind of chance. Uh, I'm going to try doing an enema with this uh, urine. It's not nice enough to drink, so I'm going to try an enema. Uh, and essentially, my organs inside will essentially absorb the liquid and it'll hydrate me. And it'll avoid me having that horrible taste. I've seen it done before on TV a few times, enemas. And I know that urine therapy enemas exist. Uh, I've never seen it online at one point, people using urine therapy, they have sometimes drink it, and they've also used it in an enema. They've also used coffee enemas, I guess to get the caffeine into your system fast, uh, and urine enemas. Okay, so I'm gonna give it a go. What I wanna do is lie on my left hand side. That's the best way to do it, to avoid losing any nutrients from your bowels. But essentially my bowels will be absorbing all this. This is gonna be absolutely gross. A bloody well night. Bloody well night. Oh. Get the tube going. This is what happens. I'm so desperate for hydration and I need this for the walk. You don't realise how... Oh, you don't realise. Even it's overcast now. I haven't had a proper drink in the Sahara heat. And I know this could work. It might not work. It could work. But we're going to give it a go. Uh, let's see, so put this inside, not too deep. When I tip, I'm going to tip it upside down. I'm tipping it upside down. Will cause the liquor to flow through. I'm going to try to tie this around to make a kind of plug to stop water from coming out the sides. I'm just going to plug it in. Wrap this around. Force it in. I guess tight. Okay. As tight as still as I'm gonna get. It's not too deep. There we go. Oh my god, oh, that looks absolutely gross. Okay, I'm gonna lie on my left hand side. Oh. Oh.
I got in. Ugh. That's in. Oh my god. That's in. Just. Uh. Believe for nothing. Ah. Ah. Other side. Ah. 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 Ah, oh, it's going down slowly. Ah, oh. ah, oh. there we go. Ah, oh. ah, oh. oh. it is going down. Oh my god. Oh. Ah, oh, let's let that sit for a bit. Ah, oh. ah, oh. ah. Oh. Oh. that is it. Ah, uh, now it's just a waiting game. As it absorbs itself in, even speed it up a bit. Oh. I feel so much better after anyway. Like I don't feel like I'm fighting fit, but I feel like I've got some moisture inside me. I'm just at the moment avoiding bending down, uh, as that might force the release of those fluids out of my kind of rectum, uh, because essentially I want to keep it in there as long as I can. And as my kind of my bowels, my rectum, whatever, is going to just essentially absorb it all up. And it's going to kind of be used throughout my body. You know, I know there's obviously salt in urine, but I've been sweating a lot, and sweating gets rid of a lot of salt, so I've been missing a lot of essential salts. Uh, now, my plan. Now, I've scouted up there, up the top of that mountain. My plan is to head yonder and go out from there. I'm just going to just keep standing whilst I, uh, I can feel the looks inside me to honest, it's a bit weird. Just about to uh, take some photos, just general photos, you know, uh, different views and I just found this on me. Uh, I was going to eat that but oh well. There. Look how beautiful this is. It's beautiful. As much as you're out here surviving, it's easy to forget how beautiful Africa is. Look at that like light shining down from the heavens it's absolutely beautiful I've got a long trek ahead of me tonight my bags are almost packed I'm getting ready, I'm going to make a signal fire first I think but yeah my bags are almost packed and I've got an all night long hike out ahead of me and hopefully I'll be out this desert in about you know by tomorrow at some point by day three be three days in the desert completed again hasn't been easy it's been very hard the dehydration is the worst part but I've managed it and I've learned a lot learned about the unpredictabilities of the weather 
It's drizzled a few times, but not enough to collect any water. It only kind of dehydrates you more if you try to lick the water because you're kind of using your tongue. And my feet are absolutely caning. I'm sticking, I'm kind of stepping on little sharp pieces all the time. But at the moment, I feel serene. I think the sunsets are always my favourite part of today. As long as the weather, as long as it's a uh, as long as it's not raining, it's not too cold. Nothing can beat a sunset, you know? No one is seeing this sunset from this angle. I'm the only one in the world at the moment that's seeing this sunset from this angle, and it's absolutely beautiful. Like, it's breathtaking. Like, it was as painful as, painful as this trip has been. And sometimes I don't, sometimes when I'm, when I'm struggling and it hurts, you know, I don't, I forget why I'm doing this. I forget why I put myself through all this pain. And that sunset. Is worth every ache and ah. I can see the moon in the background there. By the way, this light is an infrared light. It's not a light which I can see anything with. It's purely infrared. Infrared. So this light isn't a light, it's just purely infrared. Yeah, I'm out here in the desert at night. It's pretty intimidating a place. But what I've kind of done, whilst I've been out here the whole time, uh, I've avoided making a fire during the day. This is because, if you make a fire during the day, all you're going to do is end up heating up the area where you are. You're going to get hot. You're going to get dehydrated faster, you're going to lose moisture. So, making a fire at night, and resting for a fire at night, it's not just for the warmth, because I'm not really too focused about that, it's not too cold at the moment, but the focus right now is for signalling. Now what I've done is come up a hill, come up a hill, so I've got the best vantage point possible around. I'm going to set the fire, and then that light from that fire will be able to be seen by so many different people. Well, so I'm going to set the fire, and that light will be seen for miles and miles away. So if there was anyone in the area, we could hopefully try to attract them to this location. We couldn't do this during the day because a fire doesn't create enough light to kind of be noticeable in that distance. Uh, and I wouldn't be able to create enough black smoke enough to attack people my way. Uh, so yeah, I'm just gonna uh, make a signal. I'll put the camera down. And uh, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna use the battery. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take the battery out of the uh, shotgun microphone. I'm gonna use that against some steel wool and that's going to ignite it essentially and it's going to help me uh, create like a notable flame I'm going to use this that spinning technique first the, I'll take the audio out As you can see, this fire will be able to be seen for miles and miles away. Look at it, it's starting to burn real nice. So stay away, it is nylon so it doesn't burn too well in terms of fumes. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is get this. I'm gonna tie some of the string that I say, I've got this steel wool. I'm going to tie this string I scavenged from the parachute. Let's tie it around. And I've got the battery for my shotgun microphone. Let's see.
also use this now. Now that will take anyone's attention if they see it in any distance. It's quite an irregular way to create light, but it seems to have worked. Now what I will do as well, I'm gonna use this to light up the parachute. To me, the parachute's dead weight. It should be a dry night. I'm gonna be hiking the whole night. So I use this parachute, it's pointless. I made shoes, bandana, mouth guard, and a poncho from the parachute. And this is all the remainder that's left. It's dead weight, I should burn it. It's gonna create a fire, which we've yet to see in the distance. Nylon does kind of uh, set a light fast and burn quickly. It's not a slow burner. So let's have a look. Gonna blow on it to give it more oxygen. Stop the smoke up. It's a good sign. As you can see, this fire will be able to be seen from miles and miles away. Look at it, it's starting to burn real nice. So stay away, it is nylon so it doesn't burn too well in terms of fumes. Hey, you can see that fire going. So it burns very well. It's rare to be seen literally miles in any direction. At this point it's brighter than the moon so uh, yeah it's gonna let it burn. This is a thing of beauty, fire. Fire is man dominating this environment. And it does make you feel a bit dominant, to be honest. It's gonna go out in probably a few minutes. Uh, it's only gonna be a short signal fire. As it is nylon, nylon burns very quickly.
Now, if I wanted to make a more long-term fire, uh, I could have uh, used a lot of kind of shrubbery, like twigs. They wouldn't last it forever. There's no logs out here. It's the, kind of the desert. There's nothing big, just quite short places, kind of short. There's all, all areas out here are like short, very short trees. Now, the only thing out here are very short, tiny little shrubberies. That's it. Uh, but yeah, this is going to be a nice, nice quick fire. Get rid of my dead weight. It's going to put a signal out there. So if anyone did want to rescue me, they could very easily do that. For the time being, this fire would also keep any snakes away from me, if there are any snakes or lizards, you know. They're not a fan of fire. They're not like crossing to ash. Don't know why. Maybe they don't like it. Maybe it's also down to the fact that fire generally means humans. And this is like a wildfire, like a natural fire. Fire generally means humans. Fire really is beautiful. Kind of the glow. The glow is a very old, old time fashioned feeling to it. Okay. Wow, that's beautiful. Zoom in. Look at that. That's art. That is art. I'm zooming into it. It's beautiful. Look at that. You don't realise how much better you feel in a night when it's cooler versus the sun when it's shining down. The sun is way too hot. The days are way too hot. But the nights aren't too bad. So you've got a fire next to you. You know, I feel like I've got so much more energy with inside me at night. That's why it's the best time to hike. You know? Whilst my body has the same or less, or it's got less amount of calories in it, potential to burn. Well, I feel like I'm better now. Like, the night times where it's at, the heat will exhaust you. But it's fixable and it's fixed by night time. Uh, it is absolutely beautiful to look at. This may well be my highlight of the trip. That and the sunset earlier. <clears throat> Just got a few more minutes left in it, I reckon. Another five or so. The only problem with rescue in the Sahara Desert using light or fire at night is that there ain't nobody around. So I did this fire. So I did this fire on a hilltop. This means there's be greater visibility all the way around. So the higher you do the fire, the signal, the more people that can see it. If you did your fire in a valley, then nobody's going to see it unless they're at the edge at the top. One of the positives about this fire as well, are that it keeps the mosquitoes away. I've been feeling myself being bitten by flies and mosquitoes around here uh, a bit earlier in the evening. This fire will keep them away for some time, you know, they're not a fan of ash or fire. Uh, I thought I was to go out soon. But yeah, the idea is that I made this fire on the top of a hilltop. This means that it have greater visibility in the distance. If you make a fire in the valley, then only people who are higher than you will be able to see it. But if you make it on a hilltop, you get greater visibility and greater further distance where people can actually see the fire. So it's going to go down soon. But the only problem with making a fire in the Sahara Desert, even especially at night, is that there's just goddamn nobody around. You can light the biggest fire you can in the world, but if there's nobody around to see it, then what's the point?
far from a long way away. A very long way away. It's brighter than the moon at the moment. Brighter than the moon. There's other lights around it, I just want to camera lights, by the way, nothing else for it. Well... Well, that's the end of the fire. So that's good to a uh, lastly good 20 minutes, 30 minutes, and that will put out a signal in every direction from miles away. Now I'm going to get over to uh, start hiking and risking myself. I did a recon going up the mountain earlier. And I know which distance, and I know what direction. I did a recon, went up the mountain earlier, so I know kind of essentially what direction to go in. But you need to take into account also the distances. It's hard to tell distances, especially when you're up that high. Up that high. It's, it's very hard to tell distances, especially when you're up that high. You know, uh, my lips are quite dry. Yeah, so it's very hard to, to uh, tell distances. It's very hard to tell distances when you're up that high, essentially. Uh, because partly because of you know, the, the whole different viewing angle. And also you've got to take into account the fact that essentially, uh, when you're out in the desert, because everything looks so familiar and repetitive, you know, something looks a mile away, then in reality it's probably two miles away, and so forth. But I'm going to uh, just cap pack up my cameras now and uh, get going. This is, again, this is a infrared light. This isn't a actual torch. It literally purely only works to help this little info camera work better, but it messes up my other cameras. So I'm just uh, getting ready to leave camp. I've been packing my bags, uh, double checking that I haven't left anything. Uh, I'm going to start hiking out and uh, so yeah, just pack my bags. I've been kind of checking that I haven't lost anything. I'm just going to start hiking out now. Uh, whilst the sun's down, you know, it's gotten a lot more co cooler out here. The cooler it is out here, you know, the less energy, the less sweat, the less stress I kind of go under. But I do feel myself currently being bitten by, I think, mozzies. I uh, haven't had any issues with them yet since, but like, because it's the weather's kind of obviously because now I'm having issues with, now I'm having issues with mozzies. Uh, I did have issues with them last night because I was underneath a parachute and I was asleep, so you wouldn't even feel them. And now I'm awake, uh, I do kind of notice that they are kind of biting at me. That goes to so ignorant is bliss, because I bet they were biting at me yesterday. Ah, ah, mozzie, mozzie. They always go for your back because the back's the one part you can't scratch. So hiking out, visibility is poor. It's weird having this kind of big bag back on because I'm kind of sunburnt, naturally sunburnt, I guess. I'm, very, I'm sunburnt now. Uh, I've had worse sunburns though. Uh, the ground's very unsteady. Visibility is gone, I can't see. Ah! So I just stood on something really sharp.
ah, 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 it stays again. So if you can focus to see that, those sharp balls. Let me just. Ah! Again. One of those sharp balls. What I will do is I'm going to use part of the parachute. I'm going to use part of the parachute to mark my way out. So if anyone does go to my camping and find my camping area, they're, they're going to have arrows to see which direction I'm heading in. You use these. Like an arrow shape. Like it's getting itself to double back on itself. I'm going to use rocks to keep them into place. Just so when the wind does blow, it won't blow it away. No, I think it looks pretty good. It's a pretty decent arrow show. Put in that way. When you're out in the wild, you don't want to ever have to rely on just one method of survival. What the hell was that? I definitely heard something scuttling around. It's fast. It's near my feet. Anyway, let's hike on. What's that noise? You know what? What's on here? Ah! It is starting to get a bit cold. I'm going to put on It's starting to get a bit cold. Ah, I don't want to have to waste energy trying to keep warm. So I'm going to put on my... Oh, I can't even think of what the word is. This dear Jason's getting to me, I can't even think. Ah, poncho, getting bitten, getting bitten, getting bitten, getting bitten. Ah, ah. But it's so much nicer. Oh, so much nicer. So let's get the uh. I did make this bandana to keep me cool during the day. It was overcast, so I didn't really need to use it to get the sun off me. The sun's not shining on you, it's kind of just another layer to trap heat in. Just what I'm going to use for it now. Uh, I'll use it for now. I can't even... Take it back to my uh, Jimi Hendrix. Looks. There we go. Fold it. 
fold it again, we fold it one more time. And then. Since the head is one of the major heat loss zones of your body, it's going to keep the heat in. Uh, just need to rest for a second. But, yeah. It's a bit knackered to be honest. I'm starting to get really tired. I need to start moving again soon because I'm getting tired and if I get tired I'm gonna fall to sleep. I think that's uh, I think that was a my other camera I think the SD cards for. I'm too tired to care about that to be honest. Stop. I don't know where we're going to say. Okay, so I think you turn yourself off. Oh, my God. I'll tell you this. Sitting down and doing nothing is so much nicer than walking. You can really feel the cold without this poncho of your screen. Mm. Oh. So it's not... I really should not be on the ground staying still, but... I'm just so tired. I'm just so. I want to lie down for a bit. I want to lie down for a bit. Just use my bag as a headrest. I need to turn off. I don't have the energy to mess around with cameras, so I'm just going to turn this one off. Ah. Uh, mm, let's talk. You know what? Uh, as I go, I'll be a trooper, I'll be a trooper. Mm, okay, let's. Uh, it's kind of comforting. Oh, did it see your own face on camera? Uh, mm, 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 mm. Oh, okay. No. My nose hurts. I don't want to sleep. I know, no. I need. I do need to have my time walking. Huh? I need to sleep at the same time. Like I can't do everything. I'm getting bit more mosquitoes on this one, isn't it? Let's go. I thought I was going to... Uh, um, oh no, I don't have that far to go. In terms of distance away from where I need to go, it's not a far, far distance. It's probably just like a couple of miles. Literally just a couple of miles. But I'm just trying to do it. I'm just trying to do it at night because you'll expend less energy, and I'll be out sooner tomorrow if I start to walk at night. Right, right this is gonna be I don't know why I'm always tempted to look at the camera even when I'm sleeping. So do this. I'm gonna well, I'm gonna not lick my lips. But I'll tell you this. It's 
not terribly bad temperature out here tonight. Like I'm a bit chilly, but it's not like uncomfortably chilly. Oh but no, I don't lick my lips. Oh, yeah. It's not uncomfortably chilly.